Well, today's episode, we're going to feature a brand new tour by New Japan Pro Wrestling, New Year Golden Series. Right now, we got day one in Cork and Hall with some matches that are being built up for some good stories and title matches. We even got MLW Azteca. As you know, we're going to see what happened in the aftermath after Richard Holiday helped his buddy Hammerstone. But what will Caesar Duran has in store? We even got NXT UK with the Heritage Cup on the line. And of course, will Sam Gradwell find a partner to deal with Pretty Deadly? Well, we may never know. And also Impact Wrestling, as you know, Morsi's still on a warpath to get a shot of the Impact World title. We even got Tosh Steeles make a statement against Mickey James, knowing that she has a title shot against her for the Knockouts title. But also, will the ROH Renegades will continue to wreak havoc on Impact? So, let's get ready for another episode of the Leader Ratsu Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone, all things that it's pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J. Rodier. So, as you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling is back with its latest tour, New Year Golden Series. We don't know how things are going to now be changing since Wrestle Kingdom, as you know, we had some title exchanges titles that remain the same but we'll see where they're gonna go with it let's start from the beginning first match we have yoda yudo nakashima of the young lions taking on against the great okan now as you know great okan to show up without that same old entrance that he does i believe he is not in a good mood knowing that he lost big time to sonata so i wouldn't blame him for that but however, he probably will take his frustrations out on the young line, which he did when he applied the arm bar and forced them to tap out. Next up, we got another young line who this time it's Rohi Oiwa taking on, of course, the time bomb himself, Hiromu Takashi. Now, if you guys know Hiromu, he is out of his mind. He plays these, these crazy mind games. He put money on the line. I don't know why he did that, but however, I'm sorry to say is Oiwa, you lost big time with him applying the Boston Crab, which is a move he's familiarized with, and that always plays out. Next match, we got Bullet Club, Yado, and Taiji Shimuri to take on Togi Makabe and Tiger Mask. This was a very unusual pairing. There was no story build up, but however, I can tell you it was Tiger Mask who picked up the victory when he pinned Yado. Next up, we got Tomoaki Humna, Satoshi Kojima, and Toro Yano taking on Suzuki Goon members. Taka Michinuku, Taichi, and Minoru Suzuki. Now keep in mind, Yano is still beside himself that he can't believe that he lost the, uh, a third consecutive win for the KOPW trophy that now is in the hands of Minoru Suzuki. Now I know he would do whatever it takes to get that trophy but however when it comes to Minoru Suzuki we still don't know anything what he's planning to do with it but you can guess that Minoru Suzuki took care of everything when he applied the got style pile driver and it was over from there next up we got Hiroshi Tenzan Hiroyoshi Tenzan Raisuke Taguchi and Master Wato taking on the other members of Suzuki Goon we have Doiki uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and of course, Despi, also known as Des El Desperado. This match has a good implication storyline build up. As you know, Master Wato pin Desperado, and there is a possibility that he will get a shot of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship 
We don't know when, but however, he was the one that put Doiki out of his misery when he applied a submission, forcing him to tap out. But this would mean Despi knows he has a tough challenge up ahead, but we don't know when that match will be set, which I will be keeping an eye closely when that happens. Next up, we got Members of Chaos, Yo Yoshihashi, <sighs> Excuse me, Hiroki Goto, and Tomo Iroishi taking on all four members of Bullet Club's House of Torture, consistent of Dick Togo, Sho, Yujiro Takahashi, and Evil. Now keep in mind, these two teams hate each other. Evil recently defeated Ishii for the Never Open Way Champion, now he's double champion. But this is a pretty good match. As you know, there's still some grudges going in. However, in this match, it was um, Ishii that pinned, uh, what's his name, Dick Togo to send a direct message to Evil. I'm sure Evil will, I mean, Ishii will get a chance to get that his, the Never Open Weight Weight title back. Next up, we got, of course, LIJ, Shingo Tagagi, Sanada, and Naito, Tetsuya Naito taking on Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata, the ace, Hiroshi Tanahasi, and of course, the Rainmaker, Okada. Now keep in mind, Okada is now set to face against Naito for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Now this tells the story how much they want this, but however, it was uh, Naito that picked up the victory when he applied Destino on Nagata, sending a direct message to Okada. To Okada saying he's coming for a solid. These guys have been at each other before. But the real question is, when will that match happen? We will see it soon. Well, we'll find out once we get closer and closer to that. So, hope everybody enjoyed this one. I believe there will be more of this series. But this one was pretty good. It was okay. I give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, pretty good. But we'll see what happens in the following day. So I think right now we should start moving on with MLW Azteca. Okay, as you know what happened last week, Richard Holiday made the most daring rescue ever, rescuing his buddy and member of Dynasty Hammerstone, who has been taken hostage by none other than MLW's guy, the matchmaker, Cesar Duran. Now, they both confronted, but however, Richard Holiday played, tried to reason with Hammerstone, telling him that do not touch him. He always has a plan, which he did. So apparently, he's hoping that he will lose or strip up the title. But however, he still is very, very upset for Richard Holiday's interference for what he was planning on. So basically, what was happening is that he set him up to be in a Barrio Brawl match against Pegano. So we'll get to that in a bit. Now, our, max, our first opening match we have is the MLW World Tag Team Titles on the line with 5150 Danny Limelight and Slice Boogie taking on Drago and Air Rostar. However, this particular match just shows how 5150 are more progress and more at a more dangerous than they ever were before and now. But however, it was um, them 5150 that retained the titles by pinning um, Aerostar in the, in the process. Now, Emilio Sparks wants answers more about, you know, Alex Kane about who will be his next opponent. And, of course, Alex Kane believes that, you know, he's done with Calvin Tankman. But don't be so sure. Calvin Cal Tankman did say he has some plans, but we'll see what happens. Now, I, uh, as you know, Richard Holiday is going to be involved in a Barrio brawl. He doesn't know what it is. He even tries to talk to Hammerstone and Alicia Toot. They, they would try to be helpful, but they weren't. But... It didn't happen in that fashion. Now, our next match, this has nothing to do with none of the MLW rosters. They had guys from Tijuana, Mexico. We have Toto versus Proximo. Toto is the junior heavyweight champion, or cruiserweight, however they want to call it down there. 
it, I wasn't too much pump in this match, but I can tell you it ended with Proximo cheating his way through by using his foot to put on the ring ropes to win the match. Referee didn't see it. Now, the Von Erics, as you know, they will have a date with Destiny against 5154 to tap out. So, basically, they send a clear message and they're not going to be too settled when they get to them. Now, we haven't seen Jacob Fatu in two months. He broke his silence. He talked about his past, about how originally he had no interest in joining wrestling. But he did, thanks to the Usos that changed his mind. But the real question is, we when we, when we will see him into... MLW ring well that's an open book an open question that we will get that it's soon enough now for our Barrio Brawl match Richard Holiday versus Pagano this one was a, a trap right from the beginning to hurt Richard Holiday for his interference which he did even the henchmen were involved that's the referee so basically they got the revenge for what uh, he did but will they find a way to stop Caesar Dracula I don't know now, main event is the Tijuana street fight between Mads Kruger and Bessie 666. Oh, man. Mads Kruger decimated Bessie 666, allowing himself to win the match. And it was very, very, like, powerful. I mean, he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a monster, but he wasn't enough to defeat him. So we'll see what happens next week on MLW Azteca. So we'll be getting back to that next week. Okay, NXT UK. Our first opening match was pretty deadly. Sam Stoker and Lewis uh, Harley. About two weeks ago, Matt, they were a bit of questioning the intents of the tag team titles. But Sam Gradwell decided to say, do something about it. So they don't appreciate Gradwell tried to tell them what to do. So the following week, they decided to do something about it, like they tried to convince him to suspend them. But, however, uh, John, uh, what's his name? Sid Scala had a better idea. Those two, pretty deadly, versus Sam Gradwell and a partner of his choosing, or maybe no partner at all. But, apparently, he did find a partner, and this one was very unusual, and this one is Saxon Huxley. So, he volunteered. It seems like things were going great in this particular match, but however, it turned badly. Once again, the cockroach, Will, uh, Kenny Williams, decided to get involved. So basically, it just turned that way. Now, in recent, in recently, we have seen the development of Amel, the French Hope, who is now gaining followers. But Ginny goes on the warpath, telling her, you're a fake, you're a fraud, you want people to feel sorry for you. You are not the Hope. Basically, the, she looks at her as a ripped-off version of Ginny. So, basically, that's what it was. But Amel did stated that she is a real-life hope. So, we'll see where they're going to go with that. Now, as you know, Gallus and the Familia are in the verge of going to war. The Familia doesn't consider Gallus as a family due to the fact that Joe Coffey and Mark are blood-related. They think that doesn't mean nothing. But, however, this is still unclear when we will see that big match happen between the three, all six men. Now, our next match. Not too long ago, Amelia McKenzie has been de dealt with Isla Dawn, who stole her watch. Collecting stuff as a memento, she requested earlier in the week the return of her watch. But, however, it was set to be in the match. Everybody would assume that Amelia was going to win. But, no, Isla Dawn won. But, she gave back the watch to McKenzie. Now our main event is the NXT UK Heritage Cup. This man was unbelievably good. Now the first um, two match rounds were all zero until the third round. It was in fact Noam Dar. I'm like wow. And then when we get to the fifth round, Kid won. But the sixth round is where it was crucial. Somebody had to pick up the win, but it didn't happen. Basically, um, it came into a draw, which is rare to see in WWE. But, however, it did happen. And, basically, we don't know who will be 
<sighs> Challenging for this title, but Kid must be disappointed because it ended in a draw. But however, uh, what's his name? Noam Dar retains the title. But we'll see what happens next week or we'll find out what's going to take place. So I think that's pretty much it. So I believe it's time for us to move on with Impact Wrestling. Okay, last thing I'm going to review is Impact Wrestling, where we have Mickey James coming out to the commentary because this particular match involves her due to the fact we have a number one contender for the Knockouts Championship. And then we have Tasha Steeles along with Savannah Evans to take on Chelsea Green, who Chelsea believes felt that it should have been her to win, but Tasha somehow got her claws on it. I mean, this particular match was good because it showed Tasha Seals did not need Savannah Evans to help her cheat. And that's exactly what she did. But, however, it ended with the Crucifix, which was a big disappointing loss for Chelsea Green. But later, there was a post-match promo set by Tasha Steeles calling out Mickey James, telling her they have a date with Destiny. But Tasha Steeles crossed the line by involving Mickey James' son, and once again, she had Savannah Evans to help her out. But luckily for Mickey, she had Chelsea Green to help her out. Now, speaking of Chelsea Green, as you know, her real-life husband, Mark Cadona, did something on Beyond the Impact. He called a shot for a shot of the digital media championship that Jordan Grace has. So basically, he issued a challenge. Interview was conducted by Gia Miller, asking her about this Thing, you know, so basically C Cardona knows that he may never know when he'll get another shot of the Impact World title, but this is something that he knows he has to keep his, his eyes set on. So basically, he wants this title. We'll see where it goes from there. Now, out of the courtesy, we had video clips coming from Ring of Honor, showing some old clips of old matches and all that. That was pretty good. But we still don't know much about what's been going on with the Renegades. Now our next match we have the influence consistent of Daniel Dashwood and Madison Rain to take on the K, Havoc, and Rosemary. But it, before the bell ever be, uh, rang, uh, influence attacked the K. But however, Rosemary got injured and they had to pull her out. But Havoc made the decision to stay in order to hold on to fork. But however, it was just too much for her to handle against two people. And it didn't allow them to win. However, as soon as the match was over, we jump into the Inspiration, who I mean, believe who still has a date with them for the tag titles. They believe that they were the ones who copied them. So it basically is like the he said, she said, you copy me, that sort of thing. So I thought it was pretty interesting. Now, Ace Austin, as you know, he basically has some words to talk to the new guy in the block, talking about Ace Austin. I mean. Mike Bailey, he is trying to deal with that, so it's still unclear when we'll see more of this thing develop, but that is something we gotta pay attention to. Now, the Learning Tree, VSK, and Ziggy Dice were set to face against W. Morrissey in a 2 on 1 match. Basically, Morrissey took them out like it was bread on butter, you know, that sort of thing, but he did state that he wants a shot of, of Moose for the title. He said he was going to look for him. But however, as soon as the mat, he, uh, the cameras stop rolling from the front, we go to the back. Of course, the more uh, talks to him saying, look, I get it. You're right. You deserve another title shot. So he told him, I'll give it to you. I have no surrender. So I think Morse is okay with the idea. But the real question, will Moose be okay? The answer to that, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to be a hell of a difference at all. Now, the more, on the other hand, as you know, has been dealing with the arrival of the ROH Renegades. We still don't know what's going on, why they've been doing this. So they show up saying they got tickets to see to support their guy, Jonathan Gresham, who is the current ROH World Champion. And he defended his title against Steve Macklin in Pure Rules. Macklin, this told disrespectful, tried to play smart, tried to count the broke breaks, but however, Gresham did not waver in anything. It showed how much he wants to prove he is a fighting champion. That's exactly what he did when he took out um, 
was his name, Steve Macklin. However, the R.H. Renegades took off once this match was over. Now, we are now seeing the, the beginning of a friendship or partnership between Violent by Design and the Good Brothers. We saw the two behemoths, Doc Gallows and um, Joe Dorian, teaming up to take on Heat and Rhino. I thought it was a very a good match. And, of course, they had they gave Heat a double choke slam in order to win the match. In our main event, we have Charlie Haas versus uh, Josh Alexander Mann. This match was great. I enjoyed everything about it because it showed like they are in the same kind of style of wrestling, which it's really good. But, however, the match ended in favor by Josh Alexander win. But, once again, here comes the RH Renegades causing mayhem. Save and try to give the helping hands so that William Mac and and what's his name? Uh, I think it's uh, you know, T well, well, let's call it Team Impact. So basically, however, our DRH guys did say that they're there to saying that honor meant something to them, but not anymore. So that means the animals are now set free, but we don't know what's their true motives of being an Impact. We know they are free, but the real question, why? So we still need to see more about that, but we'll just wait and see the, the following week. And I believe that's pretty much it, what I got for all of you. I think now it's time for me to call it a night. Well, I hope you guys enjoy these epi this episode where we're going to review four events. The start of the uh, New Year's Golden Year by New Japan, MLW, NXT UK, and Impact. Coming up, we got more on day two. Of New Japan Pro Wrestling's uh, New Year's Golden Years. And we also, in the Golden Series, I mean. And we have AW Rampage and 205 Live. Just three reviews, and that's pretty much it what we got. So, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day.